What's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to another epic online battle on the Seven Kingdoms mod for Total War Attila. Today we have an awesome setup kind of scenario which me and Pixelated Apollo came up with. If you have already seen this on his channel, please don't spoil it for anyone in the description because it is such a close battle towards the end. Probably one of the funnest battles I have done in a long time as well. Uh, so yeah, if, if you haven't seen this yet, then I wouldn't recommend going down into the comments because people might spoil it for you. And it has such a close ending that you just have to see it. As well as that, I also spent quite a lot of time on the intro. So if you do enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like and a comment. I appreciate it so, so much much um, as I did obviously spend a lot more time on this video and if you want to see more videos like this then please do let me know as well because that's the best way I will find out about you know doing more of these crazy ass battles where we have more scenarios and stuff like that so yeah please 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 do let me know if you enjoy that so the basically the scenario behind this battle is we're doing kind of a battle during the uh during the war of the five kings but also the phrase of betrayed you know rob maybe rob didn't go to the to the wedding or something and the phrase still betrayed him so he's been he's been encircled by tywin an army led by tywin and a large fray force i think in total they number about nine thousand soldiers so at the moment rob is surrounded he has some loyal umber and uh, mormon and i believe he has some glover soldiers you know ready to help try and defend the castle uh, for him but out in the wings there is a bolton army led by ramsey bolton he is going to be taking these troops i think around about 10 to 15 minutes into the battle and he's going to be marching in and trying to help rob out and try and defend rob so basically the whole idea is i like half the defenders defend and then Ramsey Bolton will come in like who I'm playing as at the moment I'm playing as uh, the Boltons uh, he will move in after and then try and reclaim the city and kind of get to Rob before he dies and gets over overwhelmed by the Freys and the Lannisters so it should be a really fun battle let's speed up the camera and we'll run through the army comps and then we'll jump straight into the battle so uh, we'll look at the Lannister army first this will be pretty quick but if you do want to skip it then as I said timestamp down below but you know the, the army units are quite similar in, in this mod so you know it's kind of nice to uh, uh, nice to do the army comp. So we've got Tyrion Lannister right here leading the leading the forces, looking absolutely glorious. Look at him. The 3D artwork is just absolutely amazing. Then to his right, I guess, we have Jamie Lannister. Jamie Lannister is in this fight. Uh, he is right here, I believe. I don't know, actually. That, no, that's not Jamie Lannister. Who is this then? That's 100% not Jamie Lannister. Is that just supposed to be like an officer or something? Or maybe it's like a younger Lannister son or something. That's crazy. I, I'm pretty sure Jamie. Yeah, Jamie's right here. But that's really cool. I like how they've got and have got like other because they would, I guess, have other Lannister, you know, family members being part of it. And we're also going to pause the battle because some siege towers are already getting there, and we don't want to miss any of the action. So we've got that. Then over here we've got some more Lannister cavalry. I can pretty much I know the names already, so I don't need to do that. Then we've got some heavy Lannister infantry. They look glorious in the snow, just crouching, trying to stay hidden from the enemy archer fire, um, and they are ready to push forward. Then as we move across, we have some more heavy infantry. And if we go to the bow contingent, we can see that there's about four or five or of these uh, longbows, which the defenders, uh, the attackers will be using. And the, the, the actual uh, longbows are so strong in this mod. They really, really are. Uh, then we have some of the heavy spearmen. Uh, I mean, these are medium spearmen, but I really like the kite shields. They look really cool and unique. I have seen some people complain about the lack of helmets, but it doesn't really bother me too much. Then we have some more medium infantry over here. And then finally, I guess we'll just have some heavy spearmen situated somewhere along these fields. But I really do like these kite shields for the Lannisters. So it's pretty much the Lannister army. Then as we move over to the Frey army, which is pushing in already, we have five units of these Frey longbows. I like how the Freys are kind of like, you know, just mainly just situated in leather. They can't really afford a, a, like a large amount of heavy armor. So their heavy infantry is a lot weaker. So then if we move back, we have their light infantry right here. These guys are basically just going to be like cannon fodder. They have some nice weapons, but nothing too crazy. Basically just the, 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 the just like a pitchfork, I guess. Whatever they could pick up and take to the battlefield. Then as we go back, we have more Frey heavy infantry. I think these are the heavy spearmen, if I'm not corrected. They are indeed. So they get a shield, they get a helmet, you know, a little bit more. But basically, they're just focusing on numbers, uh, which is very interesting indeed. Then as we move across, we've got more spearmen more spearmen and then finally if we get to the swordsmen uh which are right here then we have some fray swordsmen 
These guys are, you know, as you can see, a little bit more armor. They've got a bit more studded stuff, a bit of a better helmet and stuff. But again, they're not going to be anything, you know, crazy. They're not going to be like Glover Infantry uh, or, or anything like that. Let me have some Frey Cavalry right here. I believe this is Black World of Frey right there. That's World of Frey's, the, the guy you guys know from the TV show. This is his son, who's also called World of Frey. But I think he's Black World of Frey, I believe. I, I'm not 100% sure. I could have just made, uh, messed it up. So if I did, I apologize. Then finally, for my army, the reinforcing army, the glorious Boltons who will come to the young wolf's aid. We have uh, these Bolton uh, light swords. I think the detail, like look at that detail right here. It's just fucking amazing. This isn't even on the highest graphics as well. I've turned it down a little bit because we do have a load of men uh, fighting in this battle. But I think it just looks really, really good. Then as we go back, we have the Bolton heavy swordsman. Like, they're just really iconic. Look at that shield. They just look so iconic from the TV show. They really do. And you can see that all the Boltons, I think, yeah, literally all the Boltons have helmets. So I guess that's to kind of show, you know, that they're more of a, like, a, you know, they're a bit more wealthier. Their armies had a bit more uh, money spent on it. Then as we go back, more Bolton heavy swords. I believe we have some Bolton spearmen over here to the right flank. We do indeed. They're crouching down, uh, you know, taking their breath. But look at that. Oh, it just looks sick. It really does. Then we have some Bolton Heavy Cavalry. Then as we look at the Young Wolf's Army. Sorry, I said this wasn't going to be long, but I've just got carried away looking at all the, all the cool looking units. So we have some of the Young Wolf's Cavalry. Hopefully you can situate these. These are led by the Karstarks. Hopefully you can use these bad boys uh, to great effect. Then as we move over, we have some soldiers on this flank. These are going to be House Mormon. They're going to be holding this down with their good, good men. They're going to be holding down this street. He's got two units of spearmen here. Then as we move up, we have some more Mormon spears over here. Then up on this little ridge, there are some uh, Stark longbows. Oh no, these are Glover longbows right there. Some Stark heavy infantry. I like how, yeah, I really like how the, the captains, like they're actually people. Like I assume this is something they're working on pretty heavily. But just to add in, you know, like different faces for the captains, even if they aren't. Uh, his, I think these are actually, yeah, I think these are actually could be the mod creators. Because I remember him telling me something about that. How they're, they're trying to put in all the mod creators. But yeah, we have two units of heavy stock infantry. These guys are really good. And I mean, look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful right there. Uh, then as we move across, we have more, some more Stark Longbowmen. We have some Stark Skirmishers. These are just like Javelin Men. Then finally, one of the last positions the Starks have, they have these uh, Heavy Swordsmen down here. Then he's got a, Apollo's got a Catapult. Some Umber Spearmen or um, Umber Pikemen to try their best and hold the, the top bit. Then obviously the Young Wolf is here watching the battle. Ready to go in if needs be. Ready to give his life to hold this fortress. All he needs to do is buy as much time as possible. Then some more infantry and another unit of Glover longbows. So cool, let's go ahead and get started. The first engagement is going to be over here. As the Lannisters pour in, we will start the timer. So I think Apollo has to hold off for like 15 minutes. I think that's what we set it to. We said, Apollo, if you can hold off for 15 minutes or you know, try and do as much damage as you can before the 15 minutes is up, then my army will arrive. And that's kind of what we are planning on doing. So hopefully that is going to be the case. The Freys are smashing the gate in the north side of the battlefield, which is pretty scary. Because Apollo's kind of focused his entire force on this part of the fortress. So he's going to be trying his best to, uh, you know, hold them in place here. Whilst kind of letting the Freys take their time and invade the city. So uh, hopefully Apollo can do that. I imagine he's going to form up his defensive test pseudo any second now. It's going to look glorious as the enemy soldiers come charging. He's going to push up to the towers. Does not want to give these towers up. And there we go. Let's go ahead and have a look at these Lannister soldiers as they try and break this defensive test judo. It's going to be extremely difficult for them, especially with the fire arrows just pouring down. But they're going to try their best, that is for sure. Let's try and get some close-ups of this engagement. Yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, I cannot help you yet, Apollo. You just have to bide your time and try and hold off. You've got some peasants coming in as well, running to the front. The fire arrows are just causing havoc right now. But I mean, the, this line is holding. That's that's definitely true. 
At the moment, the heavy swords, because they're in that defensive test judo, are doing plenty of damage. As well as that, Apollo has his longbows up on the top of the ridge, just shooting down at these heavy Lannister swordsmen. Tywin has decided to push in his heavy infantry first, which is going to be very, very, you know, they're going to be good because they're going to be able to break the enemy line. However, if he loses them early, then that's going to be devastating for him. So we've got some more Lannisters pushing up here. You can hear the gate fire burning down if we just zoom out and take a look at that. Oh, that looks glorious. Yeah, you can see the gate as the soldiers are trying to run through it onto the front lines. The spearmen are charging. As the oh, this is so glorious as they try and break the Stark line. Look at them pour in through the gate. My god, look at that. The Lannister flag being held high. But the burning oil is coming down and burning so many Lannister warriors. And they're going to be hitting away as best they can. If they can break this, you see Apollo only has around about 2,000 men. So he's outnumbered almost 4 to 1 at the moment. Starks are going to break their formation and push on. Try and, uh, try and do some damage. These are weaker units, so they can definitely do that. There's also, he also, Apollo also brought up an extra unit of heavy infantry to help out over at this breach point. As the Lannisters try their best to break down and take him out if we turn our camera around and look at the phrase we can see that they are pouring into the city now with huge numbers i think they're just going to try and get into the city and then try and assault apollo's position the main goal of the phrase i guess is to break upon this tower take out the tower uh, which is currently being shot at and being taken by the lannisters um, and then get up on this little hill point right there and then use his forces to kind of envelop around the side and help out the, uh, the Lannister player as he tries and pushes in. As Tywin tries to take out this formation. Because you can already see the first wave has just ended. And if we take a look at the kills, you can definitely see that the Starks came out on top of there. They killed so many of the Lannister warriors. You can just see them like just dead flying down. But as you see, the lion does not retreat. The flags are being pushed up. And he is going on. The javelins are throwing now. The skirmisher javelins are just having free reign to unleash hell. You can see them right here. They're going to be unleashing a deadly volley over the Lannister soldiers. Or over the Stark soldiers and into the Lannister soldiers. I think some of them are killing their own Stark soldiers. You can see that the line is starting to thin out here. Um, however, it's going to be more cost effective to do that. The towers are still shooting shot after shot as well. And I think by this point, Tywin has decided just to hold back his army and let his Frey ally move in. And almost use his Frey ally as a, as a kind of a meat shield to absorb a lot of Apollo's ammunition. At the moment, if we look at the balance of power, you can see that, uh, I mean, Apollo's managed to kill, uh, what, like, close to, almost, I guess, coming up to 2,000 soldiers already. And he's only lost 300 of his own. So at the moment, you know... These are doing very good. If Apollo is looking like he will be able to hold off. But as I said, this is very, very early days. And who knows what could happen. As we can just see the entire, the entire enemy force here just pouring in. Towers going down. The Freys are really just using their numbers advantage. I think the Freys have around about 4,000 men. So they are just going to be pouring in, using their weight of numbers to really crush against Apollo's front line. Because that's their goal. They need to take this city before my forces turn up. Because once the Boltons turn up, once Ramsey turns up, we can pour into the city and just overwhelm the tired forces. And if they haven't taken out the young wolf yet then that's going to be very brutal. Because again, all they really have to do is claim that top Pisa, take out that flag. And once that flag's taken out, then that will completely allow them to uh, to just win the day because they have to hold it for like a minute or something. So all they have to do is if, if they can get to that flag point, they can take it out. Uh, then let the timer start ticking down and then you'll just slot my forces as I try and push in. So at the moment we can see the phrase first engagement, lots of them dying. That's exactly what I like to see. Oh, sliced head off, and he's going to, Apollo's instantly going to send back that first unit of Frey Warriors. I mean, look at this position, though. It is it's really well positioned. More Freys are going to be coming and pouring onto this formation. However, it's going to be extremely difficult to break this shield formation. I think that's one of the reasons he's currently using his, uh, he's currently using his archers to try and whittle it down. But I mean, look at, look how quickly and efficiently the Starks take care of these weak Frey units. Just slicing them limb from limb at the moment. So many decapitations going off. 
A few Stark soldiers are going down, and maybe this is what the Frey player wants. He wants to tire out the more elite units, so when he does push in his heavy swordsmen, they can just overwhelm them. But Apollo wants to seize this advantage. He's going to move up another unit of heavy infantry just to try and cut out these Freys as soon as possible. So many heads going off. I love to see that. And if we just speed up the camera a little bit, get the rotation up, get the speed up, we can go back and zoom and have a look at what the Lannisters are doing. Yeah, as you can see, the Lannisters pretty much held up their advance. They tried wave one, it didn't work. They tried wave two and that did not work either. The Starks held their ground. You can hear them cheering right now. The amount of dead at the gate is absolutely disgusting. It really is. Look at this. So many dead Lannisters, dead to the burning oil. It could have been a really good idea for him to set this alight before he moved in. Uh, but he he's, hasn't really committed his entire army. He has some medium infantry, spear infantry right here. Just kind of protecting, making sure no one tries to come out the gates. Uh, but he is ab absorbing a lot of missile fire. But as we go back, the, the Lannister warrior, uh, the Loras, <laughs> Tywin, I'm just going to call him Tywin from now on, now on. Tywin does have a lot of soldiers who are, you know, ready to go into combat are fresh and are not tired and they're still pretty good. So even though Tywin has lost a lot of soldiers, uh, he's okay with that. He really, really is because that's not going to be an issue. And here we go. Apollo is charging in. He's managed to get some of his cavalry, his cast out cavalry from the beginning of the game into these light Lannister warrior, uh, into these light Frey soldiers, and the Freys are going to be getting cut down. Luckily, this does pin them in place and allows the Frey longbows to open up on them and shoot volley after volley, which is going to take out several horses. And against a unit of light infantry, you know, that wasn't the best thing in the world for Apollo's cavalry. And as well as that, you can see there's so much infantry just laying here for House Frey, just ready and waiting as more and more get pushed in. You can see he sent an entire, entire, I guess, platoon over here of infantry to go and take this flag point to lower Apollo's morale. If we go back to the main fighting, you can see House Frey is throwing another wave against the defensive line of the Stark Heavy Infantry. And will this one avail? You can see so many Freys laying dead on the floor and the Starks just standing in shield rule, ready to receive anyone who comes their way. They are hardened warriors and they will defend the young wolf to the bitter end if that is what's called upon them. And the timer is also ticking down. You can see I've got about another 10 minutes to wait before I can start moving my forces in. So Apollo just needs to hold. However, it's going to be hard for him now. You can see the Frey Horde is moving now. They are charging into combat with literally everything they have. Because they've seen it. They know the time is ticking away. And they need to make get a move on. I believe the Lannister Warrior, yeah, the Lannister faction of Tywin is just holding back for now. But if we press K and take kind of a glimpse of it, you can see all the enemy warriors moving in. Some of the cavalry has been uh, has been caught over here. I believe he did manage to get a really nice uh, charge down, though. And the longbows are also hurting a few of his own soldiers. All these Frey warriors are moving over. And there's also a big portion of Frey cavalry still in the woods waiting off. Don't worry, Rob. My forces are on the way. And here we go. The fire catapults are unleashed. And they are pouring in. The Frey player is globbing up a lot of his units they are being blobbed and that's going to be perfect for the, the Stark catapults to just unleash after fire here we go Ramsey Bolton's forces are still waiting not quite in the action yet um, but if we go back we can see we go back to the fire catapults and the main engagement Tywin is still holding back his forces kind of using the phrase as a meat shield almost to allow them to kind of exhaust the Stark troops You can just see so many frays being cut down. I really love in this mod how the... Uh, sorry, I moved the mouse cursor. I really love how in this mod how there's so many kill animations. I think it's really awesome. Um, as well as that, the defenders also have unlimited morale. If you're a defender, you will not rout. And I really like that. You can make arguments for the defenders actually you know, running away from the city. But there is nowhere for them to run. The young wolf is surrounded. So these soldiers would fight to the death. And I really like in this mod how all the defenders have max morale. It really does make it interesting and kind of show this, you know, bitter to the bitter end kind of mentality. I really, really like it. 
as well as this they have recently updated it so this patch is the latest one so since then i think they've balanced the game a lot more they've made it so each faction kind of has a unique kind of play style um so that you know say that the the Greyjoys have really good infantry you know e each faction has kind of different stats now so it's not just the same units which is something i'm really really looking forward to trying out after this battle uh, please also make sure to give me ideas for scenarios as well in the comments down below of this video. Because I, I want to start doing so many more scenarios, so, more, so much more heavily edited videos, like with a, with a really cool intro and outro. So if you guys you know, have ideas for that, please do let me know. And if you have any battle replays, please feel free to send them in to the email address down below in the comment or in the description. Make sure, to, make sure not to move any troops in the deployment phase um so that the, the replay works but uh yeah feel free to send in any so here we go the Frey soldiers have finally taken that flag point and are moving in you can see a huge catapult hit hit there but who are they up against what brave warriors are going to be holding the line i believe it is yep house mormon are ready they form defensive uh formations as the phrase get ready to push in you brave brave mormon soldiers there we go the defensive test judo has formed up as the phrase pour down the street with malice in their hearts. However, these Mormons know no king but the king in the north and they will hold. If that is what is required of them, they will not let any fray pass whilst they are standing here and defending. Luckily, they are also fighting fray. Yeah, they're also fighting fray spearmen, so it's not going to be too brutal for them. But there is a lot of them. You can definitely use the numbers to the advantage. And if we just take a, a nice little glimpse of the entire battlefield right now you can see rob stark's or yeah rob stark is still up there the lannister forces are still holding back as the phrase move on if we zoom in down here we can see the the mormon soldiers are also holding back but they're fighting swordsmen so this is going to be a lot deadlier for them if we look over on the hill again there's still warriors fighting by the looks of it the uh, the starks are doing a good job at holding them back but i don't know how many numbers they have left to actually uh to actually win the day it's going to be very very tricky indeed as we have more fray soldiers entering this battle you can already see the mormon formation is starting to buckle a little bit you can see it's kind of got a little indent there the archer fire is coming in the towers are definitely helping and the mormon flags are being held high this looks really really cool really really cool Oh, there we go. An absolutely huge catapult here coming in there. Burning so many Frey soldiers. Another one coming in and hitting friendly fire. No, that is not good. Burning so many. Oh, that's not good. But as long as the catapults keep racking up more kills, I think the, the, the Stark formation will be okay. But, you know, killing three or four Mormon soldiers is huge. Because there's just not enough of them to go around. If we look at the balance of power, you can see it's... Oh, that was a really nice hit as well. It's kind of gone back to being medium now. Uh, we actually have more men. So when my army arrives, it's going to be really, really good to help defend. It's, yeah, it's going to be an amazing one for the army. Because if we outnumber them, we just need Apollo to hold. Because all, all the enemy need to do is get to this top position right up here. All we have to do is get to this flag point. If we press K, we can take a look. Just need to get up here, take this flag point, and hold it for 150 seconds. And once that is being held, then they win the day. They claim victory. So Apollo just needs to slow them up before my army can get there. It is slowly getting closer. I believe I have another two more minutes to wait. So just hold off, Rob. Just hold off. These Mormon spears are doing an amazing job right now. They just don't have the numbers. You can look at their formation, how thin it's got. There's like only a few men in this line now. There's really not many of them left whatsoever. But they will still fight to the death. It's only a matter of time until the Frey forces completely overwhelm them. Just because of the sheer numbers. If we move up and look up on the hill, you can see the exact same. I believe the Glover Longbowmen have, are out of ammunition now. And they've been forced to go into the engagement. Just to try and slow up the Freys as much as possible. Because if this flank goes, then the Freys can move down and help out uh, Tywin and get on the rear. But by the looks of it, the Longbowmen are actually going to push back the Frey soldiers. Oh my god, look at the death right there. Glover and Stark laying side by side. That is brutal. So, so brutal. And is that movement? Is my army? My army is indeed on the way. Don't you worry, Apollo. The Boltons are here. They are here to bring 
bring, I guess, salvation to your forces. And it's only a matter of time. However, the Freys and, and the Lannisters, all they have to do is get up onto that top point and overwhelm his position. And, you know, if they kill the young wolf, that's going to help him out as well. But don't you worry. The forces of Bolton, House Bolton, are in their way. The Frey Cavalry has now arrived. And I believe Tywin has now seen this. And he's going to be pushing up several soldiers to try and help out. The Mormon formation is soon to be buckling, but there is, there's loads of Umber soldiers still up there with their pikes ready to slow down the enemy forces. I believe Rob himself is looking out into the, into the, the, the distance, I guess, to try his best and, and you know, see any reinforcements coming. But the, the Mormon formation is going to break any second now. The central, central part of the force has been broken. The Mormons there are gone from the field. And this is going to allow House Frey to run an absolute muck. As we can see, if we look down here, we've got the Frey cavalry moving in. The Starks are going to try and turn, the, turn, the, turn around and form a defensive formation. But this is going to bring men away from the gatehouse and allow Tywin to then bring his forces in. And here we go, the Frey cavalry. Form defensive formations, boys. But it is not going to be enough. They are going to get absolutely run down and sliced to pieces. This is going to allow the Frey Cavalry just to keep on moving, keep on pushing, and just break this entire defense. And this is going to allow the, the Lannisters to push up more forces into the engagement and just overwhelm the Stark forces. And this is not good. You can see my force is rushing as fast as it can. I see this gate is down, so that's where I'm going for. I'm going to try my best to get to that formation whilst the gate is down. Because that, that's really the only way I can make my way through here. As we can see, Rob Stark has now mounted his horse. Seeing my reinforcements from the distance, you can just about see them coming into the field um, as they move up. Randy Bolton is soon to be here to save Rob Stark. And you can see Robert is making his last ditch effort. He has his pikemen guarding this way. He has his pikemen guarding this way. The cavalry is going to be a huge issue as they completely just ran down every Stark soldier, allowing all the Lannister warriors now just to get up without any fighting whatsoever. So by the looks of it, Apollo only has two units of pikemen, his general unit, some archers, which are probably out of ammunition, and one unit of heavy spears. I believe the, uh, the Mormon soldiers down there are now completely taken care of. Um, I believe they are indeed. Um, so this is really a race against the clock. Can my forces get here in time and overwhelm his uh, position? I believe, yep, as we go, as I, as I was saying, Rob Stark is now looking. He is looking out into the abyss, seeing the Bolton forces, just waiting for them to pour into the city. Where is Rob? Rob, where for out are you? Trying to find him, the dude without a helmet. There he is, right there. He can just about see the forces. There is a bit of, you know, terrain in the way, but he can see the men moving in. And he's only a, he just needs to hold up. Luckily for us as well, the Frey players are taking their time. Indeed, Ramsey Bolton just needs to get to the front of the formation. I think they're waiting to take this position to lower our morale. So at the moment, like, it does look like there's a pretty decent... Uh, pretty decent formation at the moment from Apollo to hold off, especially when my men start pouring into the city. We can completely overwhelm the position and um, and just uh, win the day. That's what we're kind of hoping will happen. We're gonna get some fray cavalry here charging in against the Lannister, against the Stark shield wall. They're gonna form shield wall to try their best to kind of withstand this, give them a good dense mass. But oh, see that wasn't too bad. The Frey Cavalry did manage to push through, but they didn't obliterate them on that charge. That's going to allow these guys to get back up on their feet and try their best to defend. As long as the archers keep shooting as well, you can see more Frey Cavalry is just pouring into the city. I believe Tywin himself is moving up his entire army now to help out. And Ramsay is still moving up his army. These guys need to charge in. I don't really want to charge in the general first. So mainly just moving up all the infantry. We need to slowly make our way through the gate. And then into the city, which is soon to be in flame. I feel like the Rohirrim right now turning up at the last possible moment to save to save Apollo. You can see my forces are going to form up and then we're going to move into the, to the city right now. And the, as the Lannisters just absolutely pour in, if we go back to the engagement, we can see the Freys just cutting down the remainder of the Starks. Their swordsmen are actually doing pretty good here, if I'm honest. Because they the cavalry is in such a broken formation, the Stark infantry can stick together and kind of just really take out 
the phrase as they stand, which is which is pretty nice, if I'm honest, for the for the Stark Infantry. Oh, you see that guy just got bashed off his shield and sliced on the floor. That looked pretty amazing indeed. How's the infantry doing? Still moving up, but you can see all of this cavalry just pouring into the city. It's going to be so brutal for Apollo to defend this last bit, but don't you worry. Not long now. The siege crew is falling back, abandoning the catapults and moving back as the Umber pikemen get ready to kind of push back any forces which try and break this. Cavalry is still just pouring in, giving no mercy whatsoever. Lannister forces. You see how much the Lannister army still has left, but the balance power is actually slightly in our favor, which is pretty nice. And here we go. Ramsay Bolton has turned up to the battle. We get a nice little close in on him. Oh, look at him. He looks absolutely glorious with his model. But what's this? A Bolton is not to be trusted. Ramsay Bolton flees the field of battle. Leaving the young wolf to his demise. Traitor. But then again, I guess the Lannisters send their regards. Are you the prowling that I must bow so low? Only a cat of a different that's all the truth I know In a code of gold Or a code of red A lion still has claws And mine along And sharp my long As long and sharp as yours son Wendell came to the twins a guest. He ate Lord Walder's bread and salt, and hung his sword upon the wall to feast with friends. And they murdered him. Murdered, I say, and may the phrase choke upon their fables. I drink with Jared, jape with Simmond, promise Rhaegar the hand of my own beloved granddaughter, but never think that means I have forgotten. The North remembers, Lord Davos. The North remembers, and the Mummer's farce is almost done. My son is home. 